Alright, um... We've got a few items here that we want to farm, but also, I mean, the ultimate aim here is to get to level 99, but I need to figure out how to do the fast forwarding uh, hotkey. I can't seemingly do it while achievements are enabled, which is fair enough. Okay, we'll now get out of here because we've got the cauldron from the dragon zombie. The dragon zombie. Um... Okay, um, we are going to go through here, which I think is a swamp area. <clears throat> what kills this outright? Something kills this thing outright. It'd be useful to know what it is. Yeah, manipulate and level 4 death. I mean, it's a bit convoluted. I'd rather not. This should be enough. Yep, yeah, good. I think I grabbed all the, the treasure. I don't want to deal with this thing. The master tumbering. So that's a master Tunbury, but there are enemies in the battle square. A Tunbury, it only appears in the battle square. Okay. I have fought it before though. Yeah, yeah. It's much weaker than here. Yeah. But it doesn't have anything nice. I mean, it, you can morph it into elixirs, which I can do prepared anyway. You can steal the turbo ether, who whoop de doo. It sometimes drops the phoenix down. But I mean, that's probably just a stat that's added into its enemy file. If you can only uh, get it in Battle Square, then you're not going to be getting any drops. So. something I should probably investigate like um it seems like a lot of people that um watch retro are in America right so I should be more cognizant of uh how Australian time lines up and whether or not I want to have it uh, closely aligned with uh, US time or with UK time or with Australian time specifically hmm
So apparently... Oh. So here is the swamp area. I'm getting deja vu here. Yep, yep. That's weird. I'm, I'm trying to get into the menu. And it's not letting me. I'm like, wait, what? Okay, now I can. How you doing, life? Um, yeah, I know. We finished the game yesterday. But now we're hunting for achievements. So... What we want to do is we want to duck out and get out of the North Crater. We're coming back here to do level grinding, but there are some things on the outside I want. I also want to drop a save here, actually. I'll do it over the top of my existing one. Because we just got all of the um, enemy skill. I haven't figured out the fast forward function, so that's annoying. And I can't, I can't seemingly get into the menu at the moment. Or well, maybe that's changed. Should we another try? No. So I don't know why I did, but I prevented it from um, enabling me to get back into the menu. So that's concerning. I'll drop another save once I get outside, and then see how I'm messing things up. I forgot earlier this weekend. I finally sent you that link to Game Maker Studio. Thank you. Thank you. I'll check it later. We can discuss it at some point when you have time, no rush, yep. Okay, I don't think uh, in this playthrough I've ever exited um, the crater once I've gotten to this point. Let's see. I've gone to this bit, obviously. Quite a few um, items to get, actually. Eight of them are easy to get. One of them is not. Yeah, the whole format of classic JRPGs does not do it for me anymore. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, I think people are fatigued from them, I guess. But then again, like, there are still, like, so many yet to be played, you know what I mean? It's one of those things stopping me from playing Persona 4 and 5. I get them for those. playing whatever the hell they want. Big fan. We 
which is kind of kind of productive to what I'm doing with the redeem store. But I feel like if I want to entice people to watch me, I, ne I need to have a, a system in place which will keep people coming back. So hence what I've done. I also feel like the open battle system that Square has moved to with the 7 remake has not really worked either. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me it's all about the story. If the story is shit, like why would I want to touch your garbage? It's always been about the lore. Gotta get out of the hole. Out of the hole. It's a big jump out. I've seen the best game engine. Uh, the best game engine I've seen in a decade is the Zelda Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild one. It's a pretty cool game. Pretty cool game. Just let Vincent get rid of his uh limit break. There he is. He's waking up now. Even then, I feel like the concept of being able to take heaps of damage and then heal with food and potions instantly kind of sucks. Yeah. That's why with um, a lot of Skyrim mods, they um, make it so that the, um, the healing rate does it over time. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's fantasy, right? There are some that want, like, um, pure immersion mods, let's just call them. Um, and they want them as realistic as possible, but at the end of the day, you're making a game for a wide audience, so... I can actually, he won't let me go that way. I need to figure out how to get up. Uh, Dark Souls and Elden Ring have the same problem. Yeah, <laughs> well, they're time vampires, you know. But how do I get out? Do I just go up this way? Okay, yeah, yes, I do. That's me. I need my immersion mods. Gold Salsa, what's up? I mean, I, I actually do like them too. Especially with um, Bethesda games, like um, Fallout 4, I had a lot of um, immersion mods for that one. And same with Skyrim, like, uh, what's the one? Frostfire? Frost something? Yeah, like, my, um, when I was playing modded Skyrim, it was, like, just full of immersion mods. The idea being, if you lose all your stamina, you are pretty much screwed. Oh, sorry, I didn't read the comment above. I think if I were in charge of a fighting system in a game, rather than losing health blow by blow with an opponent, it should not be actual hits, but instead losses of stamina. And then the idea being, if you lose all your stamina, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah. Make a play three. Let me go. Okay, um, that's kind of like Morrowind. That's a that's an interesting one. Like um, modern Morrowind. One day I'll do that. One day. One of my um, other stream friends. Uh, my name is Porto. He um, I think he started off his streams like that was the big one that kicked it off for him. His Morrowind run. I think he's still got it on his uh, YouTube page. But yeah. I'd like to see it in a legit AAA game, yeah. Tarkov is an FPS, but they seem to have some good ideas that can be taken into the RPG realm. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I felt like games like, uh, you know, survival sort of games like Rust are going in the right direction, but, you know, not quite the full direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. But is there such a thing as a perfect game at the end of the day? Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of annoying grinding. It's only a little bit. I'm going to be getting a couple items. Uh, first up will be one here. The Bandersnatch can be morphed 
into ice crystals. So I only need one here. Uh, the idea that you do not know how many bullets are in your gun unless you check. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um... I think... A lot of, like, um... Obviously devs want to implement those sorts of ideas, but maybe it's just technically difficult for them to do so. I don't know. Give me your ice crystal. Give me your ice crystal. Give it to me. I think it only has 800 uh, HP. I need to fix the tickers so that the, um, yeah. I keep saying I need to fix it, but I don't, so I'll just shove about it. <laughs> My automatic tickers, perhaps they're a bit too verbose. Alright. Um, Ice Crystal has been got. Next one, where are we going to go to? Um, Gongaga? Nah, the tickers are fine. You reckon? That's right. I got the achievements for killing both Ruby and Emerald Weapon, but I did them cheesy. So in this save, they're still around. So maybe later off off camera I'll have a go at them. Um, but I'm happy just to get the achievement. Um, Gongaga. It should be around this area. Gongaga. Here, right? Right. So what enemy am I looking for? I'm looking for... I'm looking for a Kimara bug. So the Kimara bug has, um... Uh, hourglass. Just get away from these things. Would it be um, past midnight where you are live? Because uh, Hiseo mentioned that it's uh, about 12 o'clock uh, where he is by midnight. I think I had more luck getting the, the enemy encounters when I went within Ongaga. So I might do that. Yeah, it's 1.15 a.m. I'm gonna go to bed soon. <laughs> like, a little bit past one's not too late in my in my opinion. You can get up at like 8 after having like a 7 hour nap. Sleep. It's decent. Whereas I have been sleeping far beyond 1 a.m. and it's not good. Was watching the new Game of Thrones prequel? It's trash. I, I heard um, everyone was making a big deal out of the... Um, the birthing scene, where the king makes the decision, like, okay, this is what I want. Um, he's making a big thing out of, um, saving the baby. So, he ends up killing the mother, and it's apparently graphic and triggering. And I'm just like, who's watching Game of Thrones in 2022? Who, who's, what, what outroar? What out, you know, outrage. Who's watching the show anymore after what the two showrunners did to it? Like, that, that series is destroyed. Give me Hourglass, good. And then we will try to get another. So then we can get the Hourglass off the list. Ba -be -ba -boom -ba. And I'll put ribbons on now. 
because there's nothing trying to kill me every two seconds. Nice. I agree. I thought they salted the earth with that traffic. Yep. It was so disappointing. I, I, I really did like the first five seasons of Game of Thrones. Hmm. But they fucked it. They really fucked it. But it seems Hollywood's doing that a lot now. Uh, rather than make prequels, they could just redo the last two seasons. Wreck on it. But I mean, it'd be difficult to get the um, the same actors back, you know? And um, I didn't realize the extent of the um, health problems that Amelia Clark has. Like, she had two, like, brain aneurysms. Like, I'm like, holy fucking shit. Lucky to be alive kind of thing. Yeah. And I heard that, um, you know, Obi-Wan? Apparently, um, the idea was to make it, um, about uh, Obi-Wan and Luke. Luke Skywalker. Then Kathleen Kennedy said, no, nah, it's going to be woke. It's going to be very, very woke. So, we're not allowed to have nice things, apparently. Uh, like they could fix the Star Wars movies too, by putting a scene at the end of The Rise of Skywalker, where Luke wakes up and says, what a weird dream that was. Isn't that what they did with, um, like, uh... It was like a soap opera, and they um, they made it into a big dream sequence where people weren't were, weren't killed off. I think it was called Dynasty. Or, yeah, I don't know. I didn't bother with Obi Wan yet. Not many people did. They knew exactly what was going to happen when it's uh, Kathleen Kennedy and Disney. Just a whole lot of woke trash. Okay, so that's two hourglasses. Next, we want um, dream powder. Yeah, let's let's go for the hard one. Let's go for the hard one. Um, they're both in Cosmo Canyon. Um, the sad truth is that Star Wars, as a story, did not have the chops to support much beyond three movies. I agree. Like I was, I was a bit like. Hmm? Three prequel movies? Alright. And then they made another three with Kathleen Kennedy's uh, Disney. I'm like, uh, I haven't watched any of them. Won't watch them. Because they killed off Han Solo. They, they, they turned Luke into like this, this fool, this idiot that really turned against the Force. But at the end of the day, I... The prequels exist and I'm like, okay, kind of cool, sure, whatever. But it's the original three, and they were a product of their time, you know? You know, ha like having actors like uh, James Earl Jones, voice actor Vader, James Earl Jones being a one-of-a-kind actor, you know? You can't, you know, put lightning in a bottle like that. Or it's very difficult to. Okay, so let's park it here. Let's get off my little bird and go around here. Right. Now we're trying to find a particular enemy called a... Bagarisk. And this little fucker has a very, very, very tiny chance uh, of dropping their Vassarisk claw. So I might actually save here. I could have forgiven the sequels if it weren't for that atrocious finale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't even watched uh, Mandalorian because I know that um, after they got rid of uh, what's her name, Gina Carano, like it, the show was just sabotaged, sabotaged, sabotaged. So how can I enjoy a show knowing that it's going to be sabotaged and shit near the end? I can't. That's why I really hope that the boys doesn't shit the bed because I like I've read the source material. I think that the TV show is far better than the source material, and I'm I'm comfortable with the level of wokeness that's unfortunately in it. Like I'm like, 
Okay, I can tolerate this. This is actually, like, I'm, I'm invested. It's really good. I like this show. That finale is called the Bad Robot Special Move. They did the same thing in, in Star Trek, uh, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they really ruined that character. However, Star Trek The Next Generation, the series that, like, was made in the 90s, that still exists as its own thing. So in my mind, I'm just gonna be like, la 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 la, and watch that, because I haven't watched it for long before, and it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Let's just put thousands of ships, uh, with the skin on the screen. I don't know if these guys. Never mind, it does not make sense that they could make that many, or that it would be impractical to bring that many spaceships to one location in space. Yep. I mean, I, I obviously I didn't watch Picard. I mean, I don't watch a lot of these new things. I haven't even watched Stranger Things because I think um, uh, Stranger Things is just uh, nostalgia porn. It's like, hey kids, do you remember Dungeons and Dragons in the 90s and the 80s? Well, guess what? Hey kids, do you remember Kate Bush? Guess what, kids? It's, it's like, fuck off. Like, I have my memories of the 80s and 90s, thank you very much. I don't need the nostalgia porn. And they're, um... They're sexualizing young teenagers in, in the title roles as well. Like that, uh, Millie Bobby Brown, whatever the name is. Like, I don't, I don't want to watch it. Hmm. The latest season of The Boys doesn't progress the plot. Yeah, I, I binged that, um, two weeks ago or something. I liked it. I liked it. Um, I didn't like all of it. I did not like all of it. Some of the decisions they made, I'm like, really? However, it just had some... Homelander. What's his name? Something Star. That actor? That character. Holy shit. It just, it just makes the boys a pleasure to watch. They revised the ending of Stranger Things to stretch an extra season. Yeah, the thing is like, I don't care what happens with Stranger Seasons, uh, Stranger Things because I'm never going to watch it. I'm never going to watch it. I'm of the opinion that the, the last two great TV shows, well the last three, um, you've got Sopranos, which ended abruptly, you have Breaking Bad, and then you have uh, Mad Men. All three of those, in my opinion, uh, they're really good. They're really good. And that's, that's why I was very apprehensive with The Boys. I was under the impression that The Boys was only three seasons. I was looking forward to it kind of ending and being like, that's it. But um, that didn't happen, so I was like, okay. I know that The Boys is a very popular TV series, but please don't fuck this up. You know, please don't give us Game of Thrones 2.0. Because that would suck. So. Ah, Better Call Saul. I've yet to watch that. Um, I'm hoping it's good, but um, hasn't it recently uh, finished? So if the consensus is, oh no, no, it's really, really good, I might watch it. I might watch it. Um, but they were so successful because they had the full plot planned prior to the start of production. Exactly. There wasn't any of this, like, let's make up the story as we go along. It was, it was very carefully crafted before anything was even done. Mm, that's, that's the proper way to do things. If you do it that way, there is far less chance of fucking up a crucial plot line and then, um, you know, shattering the um, suspension of disbelief of the viewer. Because there are so many shows that just, like, they're very topical. I think, like, one of the... the Two shows that come to mind that are very topical and have been able to keep going. South Park and Family. Well, Family Guy's still going, right? I mean, they're both cartoons, but they're... They're both set up in a way that it's... That there's no overarching story, you know? 